Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, I have a cardboard box. It should go out into the recycling, but I find it so difficult to, to put cardboard and boxes out. But by the same token, I'm a hoarder when it comes to these kind of things and I have been trying to declutter recently. So I'm looking at this box and I'm saying to myself, what am I going to do with it? Does it go out into the recycling or do I make something? So, I'm going to make a journal and uh, I'm going to get as much of that done as I can in this video. I want to make it quick. Uh, I don't want this to be one that sits about half done for a long time so let's see where we get to. I'm just going to start by opening it all up and cutting it into pieces and to cut it into pieces I'm just going to use, excuse me a second, I'll use scissors for the tape and I'm just going to use this cutter. I find this easier than using scissors, just got it recently, really handy and it also saves me getting out my big guillotine cutter. So here we go. So I just pulled it apart, I could have cut down that, but actually I quite like these bits, so that's fine. And you can see the box is actually kind of tearing there, that's fine. So all I'm going to do now is to cut off all these side pieces and these panels using this. So, I have my pieces. I have four of these larger sizes. Now, I could have measured them. I could have used a, a ruler to get a straight edge. I didn't bother. You know, this is supposed to be rough and ready. So, I have four of these and two, four, six, eight of these and one of that. So, I'm just trying to think how to put it together. I could separate them out kind of like this and that would just about work or I could actually cut that in half and then make smaller journals hmm. quite like the size of that but that would give me more than one journal but I think I'm going to do that I quite like that size. Okay, I'm going to cut these bits. I'll cut some of them anyway, maybe not them all. So, I think I'm actually going to get two journals out of it. I don't want to make them too big. And I think I'm just going to punch them. But I think I'll decorate them first and then punch. So that would give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then potentially, if I cut these in two, that would be four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, two journals and this little bit left over, which I might do something with later. But let's get on with this one. So I'm going to use a variety of things, maybe a bit of collage, maybe a bit of paint, just to get something down in each of these. One of the things I've got is this paper. 
to really get slightly, feel slightly waxed, so I might need to use a heavier glue than just a glue stick, I'll see. This actually was wrapped around a bottle of whiskey, and I've got a few of these, and I thought these would make quite a nice background. So let's give that a go. Okay, it's my day for running out of stick glue. I've forgotten what you call it, it doesn't matter. So, number three. I will later on dig the stuff out that's still in there, but uh, that's for when I have more time. I've also, just while I went out to get my other glue stick, pulled out a few scraps just from my scrap bin. So I'm just going to keep gluing things on here. So probably by now I've already put this on double speed and uh, I'll just keep going so you can see the way that it shapes up.
Okay, so I have a basic bit of collage down on them all. I think I'm going to do another pass and uh, then see where that takes me to. So just adding a, a little bit more here and there. Okay, I'm going to have a little think about where next. Maybe just adding a little bit of colour here and there. I've got quite a decent amount of collage on there, using up some of my scraps. You'd see that with thicker sheets, what I sometimes do is take the backing off. And that's particularly useful where it's it's kind of double-sided paper, you know, a paper pack. Uh, because I've been able to use that side, and obviously I've still got this side left. It's not been stuck down. So... Yeah, I'm going to have a little think, make a cup of coffee, have a little think, and then I'll be back. If this video is getting too long, then I might just make it two parts. I'll see how it's going. I have left things a bit rough and ready in places. That's fine. That's what this journal is about. And, you know, I just took the opportunity in places just to fold paper over. Didn't take the sellotape off. Everything seems to be sticking fine, so... Okay, I got my coffee. This could be part two, or it could be a, just a continuation, I'm not sure. Now, the journal so far, it's got a few little pops of colour, but a lot of it's... Well, I was going to say it's quite muted, but then you see that and you think it's not. I can obviously change the running order of the pages, because I've not punched them yet, so I can decide that at the end. I've pulled out four paints. Uh, this is just a white, just a basic acrylic white. This is a PBO acrylic matte and it is powder grey. Uh, pomegranate and a bit of bronze. So I'm keeping the colours, you know, not, not too bright, but I may add to that. And all I'm going to do now is go through this and add a bit of colour here and there.
So I'm mainly just dry brushing the paints on, but I've gone and got this slightly older brush because I like those little ones for other things and I don't want them to get uh, too damaged. So I'm just going to use a slightly older one. It's quite a firm brush just to do a bit of dry brushing. I'm just doing one side at a time so that can dry and then I'll come back and do the others. Okay, so because I'm dry brushing this on, it's drying quite quickly. And I do like some of the effects I'm kind of getting. Uh, you know, where I was drawing it down, it's it's showing up the ribs through the of the cardboard. That's a particularly good one. And I wasn't washing my brush out in between uses. It didn't matter to me that there was bits of colour transferring. All I was trying to do was to fill some of the gaps. I don't mind that there's bits of cardboard showing, but it helps it all just become part of a, a more cohesive background. Although some people will look at this and think, what a mess, and that's all right. I am having fun. So I think what I'm going to do now is a bit of stenciling and stamping. So I'm just going to look out a couple of stencils and maybe a couple of stamps, and then I'll do that. This is really dried quickly. There's bits sticking together a little bit, but that's okay, it's pretty much dry. Right. So I've pulled out a couple of stencils. This one is by Dusty Attic, which I think is an Australian company, and it's just called Edition Stencil. This one is by Snipart. I don't have the packet. It will be around somewhere, so I'm not exactly sure what it's called. By way of stamps, I've pulled out this one, which is one of my favourites. It's called Damask Background. A uh, script stamp and I'm never very sure what this one's called, but it's got kind of insects and whatnot on it. Oh, 
No, I don't see the name on it. Unless, no, I don't think that'll be it. Royal Menagerie, or is that the make? I don't know. Anyway, got those. And I've got black ink and vintage sepia. In terms of the colours that I'm going to use for stenciling, I might use a bit of black and I add in this bronze. Right. One side done. I'm just going to do the other side with that same stencil and then I'll bring in the additions stencil. I'm only using the tiniest amount of black paint. I don't want this bold and sticking out. I want the little bit of black just to help make everything pop. But mainly, I'm using it very thin. And because it's craft paint, it's it's slightly runnier than some. So, you know, I'm really dabbing it off on my mat here just to get a tiny amount. You can use cosmetic brushes for this. I actually find a slightly hard paint brush, I get a better effect. You know, I'm not looking for it to be perfect, but I prefer the effect that I, I get with this. So I'm just going to do a little bit on each side. I think this is almost touch dry.
So I'm really, really liking the way this is shaping up, you know, for old pieces of cardboard and bits of drop sheet and paper recycled from whiskey bottles. This is, I'm really liking the way it's going. So I think now, you, you know, if you were doing something like this, there's anything you could do, a main focal point, collage image. I think what I'm going to do is use some more little scraps, but this time maybe scraps of paper and material and maybe just add some things on. I'm going to complete all the pages before I actually punch it. And all I'm going to do is, is punch two, maybe three holes. But I want some other kind of collaged elements on there. Just kind of little bundles of, of interest. So I shall look out a couple of things to do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I just cleaned up that black paint, cleaned my hands a bit, and I'm ready for the next stage. So, I've just pulled out, this is a little scrap bag, it, it's a bag that sometimes when I'm doing tidying up I'll just throw, gather things together. Uh, so there's paper, there's some burlap, other materials, uh, some pieces that might be useful as a background to little bundles. This little journal type thing, I made it and then I wasn't keen on it. Although when I see it now, well, I don't know. I've got these pieces as well that I might use. And a bit of hessian ribbon, a bit of this. And I'm just going to staple some things together. Just little bits and pieces and then I'll probably just attach them in the journal with this. The reason I'm, I'm going to add them to the pages now before I punch the pages and bind it is that it will add a bit of bulk to the journal. So let's go. I might make a few pieces first and then start adding.
Okay, I've done five pieces and I think I'm just going to see... I might just start adding these in now and see where that takes me to. Maybe not on every page, but who knows. And as I say, I'm just going to use this fabric glue. Aileen's tacky glue would do anything like that, just a strong glue. Okay, so I now think I'm just going to add one or two little tabs, just using these little bits and pieces. Okay, so I think I'm probably going to punch holes in it now and then I'll get a better feel for where it's at. What I did discover in my little packet of goodies is, 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 what have we got in here? Typical that when I go to look I can't then see them. I know they're here. Back in a second. Yes, yeah, so I've got in here some of the words uh, that I'd made. I'll link the video above and below uh, in which I made these. And I think I'm just going to use these. I'll see how many I've got and just place them through here. But meantime, I'm going to get my punch and just punch a couple of holes and then decide how I'm actually going to Tie it together and then make a closure. I think the closure will either just be this, I quite like that colour, or this kind of hessian ribbon. 
see shortly, but I will just attach it very simply, probably just with the stapler again. Okay, so I'm not going to be precise with this. I'm going to punch a couple of holes in here, then I'll use that as my template. I'll just punch through with this little awl and then punch the actual holes. The one thing that I'd meant to do that I hadn't was to add some washi tape, so I might actually go back once I've punched the holes and do that. This is the type of thing you could keep adding to it and adding to it just whenever you wanted. Right, let's do the punching first, though, tidy some of this stuff away as well. So I've gone through, added a little bit of washi tape here and there, not necessarily a lot, just little bits. And I've looked out my words, as many as I have, including this stamped one. And I think now I'm just going to put them in. I might add a little bit of background on some of them, I don't know. Find this, might add that. Stands out a bit, maybe too much, don't know, I'll have a think. So I'm going to go through and add my words now.
So, my little junk journal from nothing more than a cardboard box and some scraps is complete. So I thought I'd just do a quick flip through. I tried to keep it as simple as possible, just punching the holes and threading this through. I might add some embellishments to that at a future point. And I have some tags that I'm making in a separate video, so I might add them into it. And the closure, again, I kept very straightforward. I do like that these strings are still coming off. Eventually they'll stop, but uh, yeah, I can pull them till they stop running. So, I didn't have quite enough words, but that's okay. I could add to this at any point. I liked the fact that the pages didn't have a main focal point. You know, not everything has to have a main focal point. Just down to individual preference. But I did like the little bundles added and the odd tab here and there. A little bit of washi, left some of the cardboard just showing. I didn't pull these too tight so that uh, there is room to actually turn and I haven't tied them so tight that I couldn't open them up again and actually add in more pages. That's the beauty of this kind of style. I do like the little bits of colour just here and there but they don't need to be everywhere. Some pages are more muted than others. So from that one cardboard box I have that journal. I've got another journal I can make, similar size. I might try and do something ever so slightly different with it, I don't know, but all in all I'm really quite happy with this little journal. So I hope you enjoyed this video. At the moment, I don't know how many parts it's going to be in. I may just do it as one long video or two or even three shorter videos. We'll see. But uh, if you like this, please do give me the thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you will. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll join me for other videos. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.